Today, it's all about the magic of fall, y'all. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. We are going to do one big project in this video. Y'all, this video took so long to make, and the actual work that it took me to do this project was a little over 12 hours. So I have condensed it, of course, because I want to show you that, yeah, it may take a while to do it, but the payoff is going to be amazing. So stay with me, y'all. Okay, this is a clock base, I think, uh, and I got it at the thrift store. It already had damage. It had these pieces of, like, metal something, and that was peeling off, and you can see here it's just crusty, and it looks really old, but it is not. It actually has a tag on the bottom of it, which I will show you when we get to that part of the video. This just pretty much peels off, and I couldn't justify saving it because the, uh, for one thing, the texture of it doesn't match the aesthetic in my house, and the other thing is that I'm really sure how well my paints and antiquing would go over this metal sheeting so the best thing to do is start with a clean surface in my opinion so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna peel as much of that off as I can and there is some type of like rubber cement or something that's under there you can just use like a little scraper and scrape you know if you have something like this with this weird overlay you can uh, scrape it off and I'm not maybe goo gone would work but I found that just peeling it off with pliers and my fingers was the, ba the best way to get it and then the little residue, I just kind of sanded over it, but then I worked with it. It helped with the texture, I think. So I had this kind of a reed-looking border that went over the edges of the metal. I'm taking that off. There are little nails all the way around it, and I will grab my pliers or my cutters, um, and I will pull out all the nails. You have to be super careful because they're everywhere, and I don't want to ruin... Um, my fingernails and my fingers by making a mess, you know, nails poked all in my fingers. That would be tragic. Okay, so I'm just using this little, believe it or not, this is a cheese knife. Mm -hmm. Got it at the thrift store and I'm thinking outside the box. I'm using it for something else. I have been using it as a scraper and it is fantastic. It is uh, a very well used piece of tool and my crafting tool set. So, you can see that I'm just going under the edge and kind of prying it up. It'll break off, uh, just snap off really easily here. It'll just kind of splinter. Peel all those pieces off. And then now I can take the nails out. And you can see that I'm just kind of going over it with my fingers to see where the nails are. They are tiny, tiny. And you, if you got eyes like me, you really can't see that well. So, yeah. But look how gross it is under there. It's kind of Halloweenish, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very, very aged and strange looking. It's kind of sticky too, so, you know, sand off what you need to sand off. I don't mind the additional texture here, though, because we're going to be covering every bit of this up with some lovely tree bark, so it'll be covered. See, this is how the back looks, and it's just a little simple wood round that's in there. I'm just going to take it out and get it out of the way. You can see how it is going to look once we get all of the pieces off. And I at first thought I would save this piece of cane uh, detail stuff, but I realized it's like the same thing on the other side, flipped upside down, and it, I don't think it's going to work for what I'm doing. I want everything to be flat, and this would cause a little more work for me to leave this on here. So we're just going to take it off. I'm telling you now, y'all, if you are four minutes into this video, or almost four minutes into this video, please stay with me because it is going to be well worth it. If you have not seen my other fairy videos, if you have not seen my other mystical woodland videos, then I'm going to have them linked for you. Uh, be sure that you go and watch those. They are a lot of fun to do, to create, and a lot of people say that they like they enjoy watching it and listening to the storyline and just kind of being part of that. So I encourage you to go and watch that. I will have it in the description box for you and up in a card if I can remember to do it. So this stuff, I don't know what this is, but I'm just kind of peeling this off. It's not a textured paper. It's actually like really thin pieces of wood. But we're going to take all that off. And it comes off fairly easily. 
I'm not going to sand this to the flat surface underneath there because a little bit of this texture on the front is going to help us remember with our glue and stuff. Now I'm just going to brush away all the extra gunk. You see everything that fell off that I took off of that clock base? It's all over the table now and I want to be sure that I have gotten all the nails out. I'm going to go in there and make sure you can see if you miss anything. Scrape off any chunks of glue that might interfere with your process of gluing everything down. And you're going to need something like a Gorilla Glue for your glue gun or you're going to need something like uh, rubber cement. Look at the mess. Look at the mess that came off there. The one piece. Yeah, that's all off of the front and back of the sides of that clock. So you can see here it does have a tag on the bottom of it. Not super old. It says it's metal and rattan. Alright, so I'm just going to take off the sticker because we don't need that under there. We're just going to remove it. Again, that little tool, I can get that off. And get our surface ready. And here are the beautiful pine bark pieces. These have been dried in the sun on the porch and they were outside for over a week in the sun before I brought them inside. I brush off the big pieces and I use a vacuum cleaner to vacuum any loose particles. You will want to get wood glue and glue down any pieces that come off because this is fragile. See how I broke that off just with my hands, didn't even have to cut it. Some pieces will break off like that. It depends on the shape of the bark that you're using. But anything else that you need, you're just going to trim off, um, you know, if it gets in the way. And then what I'm trying to do is not piece this perfectly like a puzzle, but almost like when we were growing up, <laughs> I know, y'all hear me here, I am with my stories again. There's a type of mud in Louisiana that we would call uh, buckshot. It, it was that really thick, thick chunks of mud. It was like it would rain really, really hard and then be dry for a while. And the, the, the soil would just crack into pieces and you would see divisions between each of the pieces. You're kind of going to see that in here also. So you're going to need something strong to hold your pieces down. And you can see I'm pressing on these pretty good. So if anything comes loose, you can just add a little a brush with a little bit of wood glue and just put it back together. We're not looking for a perfect fit here. We're going to kind of put these together in little bits and pieces. Put things together where they fit. You see I kind of put a piece in there and just wedged it in so that it has a flat surface to stick to. Y'all come and meet us on the Crafty Cruise Getaway. We got all the information in the description box below, and space is limited. I'd love to meet you there. Come see me. Okay, so now we're going to start adding, after we've got all the bark where we want it, we're going to start adding in our moss. You can get a bag of moss from Dollar Tree. You can use Spanish moss, reindeer moss, whatever type of moss you want. Seeing as I want this to be sort of a fall fairy, because we don't have a fall fairy yet, I am going to be using this brownish color because to me this just looks like it just reminds me of changing the seasons and all those warm colors. So we're going to go with this rather than using the bright greens that we've used on some of our previous projects. Or I guess the word would be vibrant, not bright, because I, I don't really have any fluorescence, but I do have some bright stuff. Okay, so I'm going to shove those in. Now, I'm going to go in looking between the cracks of where these pieces are, looking where they curve downward, and where I feel like moss would naturally collect. You're going to do whatever you want to do on your clock piece. Do you see the front of this, how it's kind of squared, almost like a little cave? I love it. I'm going to put it on the lip above where the drawer is in here also. The drawer we're going to do something a little different with, so you're not going to want to miss that for sure. Once you put your glue in there, you can pretty much just pack this down into there, and then you can either vacuum off the SS, excess, goodness gracious, or you can brush it off. So this is what the drawer looks like. This is the front side where we took the metal off. And I just want to kind of blend that out a little bit. It's a little too harsh, and the colors aren't really what we're going for. So I'm going to just kind of 
mute it down by putting some dark brown. I think I might have grabbed the chocolate brown for this. Could be the harvest brown. Whichever the case, I'm trying to get something that will not stand out against all of that pine bark. Now, I decided to cover this, but if you don't cover it, then I'll show you, um, then you need to use paint for it. But I will show you some other ideas. So here is some pumpkin scented pine cones. These came from Dollar Tree. These are some of the little things that come out of it. I've got some little Timu mushrooms, not sponsored. Here are some steps from Dollar Tree. And they're supposed to be wood, but they're colored like uh, stone. So we're gonna change that. And our beautiful little Timu fairy. And we're gonna change her up just a little bit. Now she's very pretty the way she is, but I'm gonna give her a little something extra. We're gonna grab some filler bouquet. I've got some scrap pieces of stuff from Fall's Past. Eucalyptus and these beautiful changing colors. You know, might consider something that's green, just turning since it's kind of a late summer, early fall thing. Fern filler, you can grab these pieces. If you don't like these little seeded pieces like this, they do have fern that you can get uh, in a pick or a vine, so you could get that. This is what that bag looks like opened. You can see all those little things that look like pumpkins. We're gonna work with that. Cut everything down to a workable length, obviously. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna pull that whole little bouquet off the top. This is gonna make it a lot easier. So the drawer now, we're gonna work on that. I'm gonna kind of measure out with this little fencing, which you can get at Amazon, you can get it at Timu, you can get it at any craft store. Mine was thrifted, and I am going to use it to go right on the inside of this box. Inside, y'all, inside, because we're gonna use staples. So I'm just using some little cutters here to make this a little more manageable. I don't need any big pieces. I don't need anything on the back side because this is where it's still going to push slightly into the clock base. So I thought, why not give her a nice little garden area with a pumpkin patch? So I'm using very short staples in my stapler. And I'm going to put, I think, three across the long part here. And then I put one or two on the sides. Just turn it around where you can get to it, and then just add one or two staples. It doesn't go all the way through. You can see I need to repair a staple there. And then I'm gonna go over it and just run a bead of glue down the length where it is connecting the fence to the box. And that will help give it a little more stability. Here's how it looks in the front. Now, I decided I wanna cover this. You can use something like these from Dollar Tree to make yours like a brick or a stone color. Here's that information if you'd like to use it. But I'm going to use this little piece of fabric. This did come from Timu, but you know, again, use whatever you have and you can certainly use like a brown felt if you, if you had that. All right, so I'm going to trim this down and then I'm gonna go across the front of that box with this. This is underneath her little garden section. Almost like it's built into a hill or something. I'm gonna stretch it out to the edge and press it down into that glue. Now, again, that's kind of bright, kind of springy. We're gonna take this little brush, go into this brown paint, kind of offload a little bit, and then just pounce it up and down. You see the difference in the grass now? Now it looks a little more fall, doesn't it? It's a little bit deeper, a little bit richer, and it's just by adding a tiny bit of paint. So let's work on this garden. I'm gonna measure how much I need just on a couple little sticks that I have. Measure it, cut it down against the other one because these are gonna be side by side together. These limbs are not perfect. They are not perfectly flat. They are not shaped like a pencil. They have curve and they don't, they are not going to sit flush amongst one another. We are going to take advantage of the fact that there's going to be a little crack in there. We're gonna do something special in there. You know, I'm always trying to get you to think outside of the box and I'm always trying to get you to save money where you can and this is a good way to do it. So this is a little piece that I got from Dollar Tree that was uh, it was two mushrooms and this little sign was sticking up above the mushrooms, but it broke. So now I have the sign and I still have the mushrooms 
and I can paint over and then have two pieces out of one. And I'm going to just make this look nice. So these are just resin, and I trimmed it down as much as I could to make it flat, and then I'm going to sand it off, get it nice and smooth. We don't want cut fingers, and we don't want sloppy work. So I'm just going to go over here, sand it down nice and smooth, and then I'll go over it with some brown paint. And of course, on those edges where I sanded it, so everything looks like it's supposed to be that way. All right, now I need to raise the level up inside of that little raised garden she has there. So I'm using a sheet of foam, and I've already measured off how much I'm going to need for the insert. And I cut it off rather crooked, but it fits. And I'm going to press it down inside of the drawer. That is going to be the first layer. And then I'm just going to layer another piece on top. Now, if you have a green block or something that's going to fit, you don't have to worry about this step. But I love to recycle foam when I get it in things that we order. Uh, so it's nice to have this. Okay? And pretty much we just used it to layer up anyway. We're not really using it to poke any flowers down into. Not really. So I'll take another piece of that uh, moss mat. I'm just going to set it in there and see how much I'm going to need. And then I'll trim that down so that it will fit. And then it's going to be kind of snug. But I want enough that it can press down all around the white and that you don't see it. We just want to see our little mossy bed here. Press it down in there. Spin it around. And then you could use a popsicle stick or something like that. You know, put your glue down, push it down, and then press this down into the little crack. Just like you're tucking in a sheet. And we want to age that just like we did on the front of the box. Everything's going to be cohesive and look nice together. How's that? Pretty good. All right. Give it just a little bit to let that dry. Then you're going to lay out where you want your little, we're going to call them pumpkins, even though that's not what they are. We're going to put those little pods in a little shape like she is growing a beautiful little pumpkin garden. She's going to be our little pumpkin fairy, and she's going to be the keeper of the pumpkin garden. But she needs a name, y'all, just like we named the other two beautiful fairies. This little girl's going to need a name, but I want you to wait until you see her and how we make her over to decide what you want to name her, okay? And we're going to do it like we did the last time. I'm going to get all your suggestions, and then I'll choose a name, and I will mention that on my community tab so everybody can meet the new girl. Now it's pretty much poking stuff down where you think it makes sense. So fairies are small, it would make sense that the ferns would be big, right? That is totally okay to do it that way. If you want things more to scale, you can do that as well. But I love miniatures and I love the idea of making small things look small, like they belong there if that makes sense to you. I know if you if you do these types of things you know what I'm talking about. So if there's any cracks in the fence, any cracks in the wood where normally little little light would shine in and they could creep out and they start blooming on the outside of the fence, put them there. Put them on the inside of the fence in the cracks in the logs. Anywhere you want to put them. Heck, this is your imagination. If you wanted your pumpkins growing right out of that eucalyptus branch, you could do that. Yeah, you could. So there's also little pine cones and, and little other little things that are in that little bag of potpourri. And you can just put what you want to embellish as you go along here. I've got little spider webs everywhere. When you have a fan going, and, you know, I'm in menopause, so I do have a fan going. The fan blows while you're doing your gluing, and then it just looks like spider webs all over the place. I get so tangled. I know you see me flipping my hand around sometimes because I get so wrapped up, and it's just webs of it. So now I'm going to go down where there are cracks, just like we did before, where we were looking for little places that needed some moss. And wherever there's moss, there's probably a little soil there, so plants are going to grow. So we can, we can put fern, and look, I love the asymmetrical stuff we got going on in the top. So cute. Yep, that's her little high lookout up there. She's making sure that there's no crows down there in her pumpkin patch. She had to sit way up top for that, don't she? I can't wait to show y'all what this is going to look like. Oh yes, we're not only decorating the outside, we are going to decorate the inside of this box. You do not want to miss that. 
So I'm pulling these off of their little branches. You leave the branch initially in case you need to use it or the little stem, whatever you want to call it. But then you can use, if you don't need to use the stem, you can just pull it off. It makes it easy. You got lots of options with faux greenery for sure. So I'm just going to put these in and sometimes I like the flowers in a little cluster and sometimes I like them just kind of by themselves randomly. I've got a little piece of fern, eucalyptus, flower, seed pod, all that together in that one spot. And I know you can, I'm out of sight a little bit, but down in the corner you could see I was adding down there. Here we are so far. I think that the gold, the yellow, that really bright orange, those colors just look warm in fall to me. It just says fall. So there's a little crack up here, and we're going to take advantage and have some little things grow in there. Down here on the bottom, we can add a little bit here. Grab those little pine cones and use them. So if you can't find these things, you know, maybe you could use acorns out of your yard. Maybe you could use... Um, some type of pressed greenery if you wanted to do that anything to make it special and to make it your own you do not have to do exactly what i'm doing right so i'm going to make my own color here i'm going to take a little harvest orange and some of this bright red i'm going to put these together to kind of make more of a reddish orange because i just want all of these mushrooms to be basically in the in the same color family in the woods mushrooms would be any color anywhere whatever but i just like it for my projects for them to be to make a little more sense to me so you know it's my imagination it's my little project i'm going to do it the way i like it right and i encourage you to always do the same thing so this is just acrylic paint and you can see where the little welcome was on top and it broke off in that little white spot I'm going to cover that up as best as I can as I'm painting this. I am going to use two coats of paint on each of the little mushrooms that I painted and the other orange mushroom is just painted with harvest orange. Just use a stem to make it look like a log and that is going to be our welcome sign. You can see so far what's going on. I know it's weird angle when I am putting things together for you to see all of this and I don't have a huge camera set up I don't have a camera crew so it's just kind of me doing my thing here but I want to share with you what it looks like so far cute huh and I do go back and add a couple of more little pumpkins in there here's that sign and I'm just gonna put it on the outside and there is a little crack between the two logs I'm gonna take advantage of that press it down in there kind of sticks and then I'm going to grab some glue and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. See? See the webs? Yes. Spider webs. Spider webs. Okay, now you can use any little pieces of wood that you have from Dollar Tree, those little, or out of your yard, little pieces of branches, little rocks, little stones. You could put a stream in there if you wanted to. You could use any of the little... Uh, the little pieces that you get that go with uh, the gnome village. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or the fairy village, whatever it's called. So I'm just taking the end of a brush, dipping it into some creamy, I think this is like an antique white, and I'm just going to put a couple of little dots back on the mushrooms. Now these mushrooms, I don't think they even had any dots, but we're, again, I'm trying to make everything look similar. So we're just going to dot them up. I'm going to go right back over where the original dot was. If you kind of hold it down and wiggle it back and forth, it's going to give you a nice circle. And the further out you wiggle it, the bigger your circle is going to be. So if you just want a tiny dot, you just dot it. You just tap it and then get away from it. Tap it. And just You can see here too that you can't really tell that it was a broken sign. So I've got some satin Mod Podge. And I'm going to be using that on all these after they're painted just to give them the same finish. Y'all, I got some dragonfly fly glaze. I cannot speak today. What is wrong with me, y'all? Who's got my tongue? I want to paint her white wings a beautiful color. I want to make them like a greenish color. Look what I'm going to do to help her stay sitting. I'm going to put a little glue on her bottom and then glue her down to my, my wax bottle. See? And that's just so that I have something to hold on to while I'm painting her. It makes it a little easier for me so I don't make a big mess. 
So I'm going to use one coat of the green, and that's an ivy green, and two coats of this glaze. It does look white at first, and here's the green. These wings have no texture, but if you use the right type of strokes with your paint, you can give these, these wings a little bit of texture. So say you do not have any of that dragonfly glaze. You don't have any of that, and so you can't use that on yours. Well, go ahead and make this look as much like an actual wing as you can with the colors you use. And you can see if you use a thin brush, you can get in all those little cracks, and then the strokes that you made are going to allow you to have some, almost like the veining in a wing. I, I know what I am trying to say, and I hope that makes sense. Matt, you're going to see it better here now. So you, if you had a wing, the wing would look like this, right? See how I'm going with the curve of it, trying to give it a little... That's what I mean. You, it almost looks like it has a veining in it. Beautiful, beautiful. There's one coat. We're going to give her two coats, though. I'm also going to do... The little skirt has, like, little petals that are white underneath the little beige ones. And I wanted to go ahead and do those green as well, so I'm using this little brush. This is a bridge brush, and it has a very, very nice, precise tip, which I love because I can push it straight into those little areas without making a huge mess, and it gives a nice full coverage, and I really like that. You could certainly skip it. And I, at Timu, they have several different of these little fairies. There's like um, one with blue hair, one with pink hair. You, know, you can just decide which one you want. Okay. And so any other little tiny areas, I can go in and use this tinier brush. And I, I want to make her blue eyes green. It's for autumn, right? So we want to make them green. So I'm going right over with a tiny, tiny tip on a brush with a tiny, tiny dot of paint right over her little blue eyes just to make them green. You don't even have to do this step if you don't want to, but it is fun for me. I want to make things my own. And look how pretty. She looks so pretty. All right, you want to make sure that everything is dried before you add anything else on her. Keep in mind, she's plastic. You want to keep her moving so nothing melts if you're using some type of a hair dryer or a tool. Now I'm going to go over to this glaze, and I'm going to go over her wings. And I'm going to try to use the same types of strokes that I used with the green, kind of out and to the side, just in case that there are any brush marks that show they make sense where they fall. So when you first do this, you may look at it and go, uh, that was anticlimactic. But it will dry and I'm going to use two layers and when it dries that's when the magic happens. So it's going to look kind of milky at first but once it dries you're going to really see the shift in the color which makes it so pretty. So I'm just going to take that same brush I'm not adding any to it and I'm going to go over the rest of the green areas and just give like little highlights on it. Just little highlights and then I'm going to go back I'm going to put a little on her nose I'm going to put a little bit on her tippy toes and her little fingers so that it, you know, maybe if the sun catches it just right or the light catches it just right, you can see that she has a little sparkle there. And that's one of those surprises that is unexpected but very pleasant. You could also do highlighter anywhere you would normally do highlight. Can you see the little, the little iridescence sort of that it gives it? I think it's such a pretty look when it dries it's so pretty. Look at that good, oh, that color. It's a green to red shift. It's so pretty. Okay, so here is what the bottom looks like. And it's a good look so far, right? Here is the top or the whole clock base. And you can use mushrooms and things from your yard if you want to, but that's, I have been using that, and I didn't want to depend on that for this project. I wanted to try something a little bit different, so no mushroom shelves or shelf mushrooms in this one. Always look at your projects from all angles to make sure it looks how you want it to. I'm going to grab some of those little pine cones, and they're going to be a little bit of a sort of a space filler also. 
we're going to add them here and there. You know, it's fall. She's got to get her house insulated. She's got to have it nice and warm before the cold weather comes, right? So we've got to make her house nice and weatherproof. And we're just going to tuck in some pine cones here and there. And you can also use acorns, little pieces of sticks if you want to add that. You could do that for sure. Any types of miniatures, uh, miniature pots or whatever, you could use that. There's a little hole in the front and I just put a little twisted pine cone in there. I'm going to add a couple of more of those little seed pod heads. I'm just going to call them that because I really don't know what they are. And then we are going to work on the inside of this box all the way through. Don't ask what I was doing here, y'all. I was being silly. Okay, so this is what the inside of the box looks like. Now, I know you can't see much here, but I love how it looks like a cave when you look out the other side. So cool. So cool. If I was a miniature, I would live right here in this box. So this is what it looks like down to the bottom. It is dark in there. I'm cool with that. We're going to use some lighting. We're also going to add some paper, and this is just like some wrapping tissue paper stuff that they uh, put around your cups and things in the store, you know, when you buy stuff that's breakable. I'm going to use that as a base and just to put this last little piece of sod or moss mat in here. <laughs> I'm going to put it in. Not even going to glue it. Nobody's going to be touching it, and this is not going to be shaken, so you're never going to know. Here that is. Now you can go over that with a little bit of the darker color, just like we did outside of the little garden area. If you want to grab some brown and, you know, kind of stipple that, you can. You're really not going to see much of this, though. I'm going to get one pick that is from Dollar Tree last year. Surely you can find some random pick somewhere at Dollar Tree that have some type of a fall color in it. I haven't bought anything new for fall this year, so this is all stuff that's you know that I've had or that I've thrifted. I'm going to take some fairy lights and I am going to wrap these around. Now my fairy lights are very long, this particular one, um, but you can use shorter fairy lights and to get an impact like this you're probably going to need a few strands from Dollar Tree. So just be sure that you um, check your battery and make sure that everything's working before you do all the work to stuff everything together. So I'm going to leave part of it on the outside, and this does not have a battery pack. It actually plugs in. So I'm going to leave where it plugs in. I'll leave a little hanging on the outside so I can tuck it back there. And then wherever I stage it, it will be backed up, and you won't see where it's plugged in because it'll be behind a table somewhere. I'm going to push the majority that is left over to one side. I'm going to take a little scotch tape and just, you know, hold it down in the back so that it doesn't slip out while I'm finagling around on the inside. And you can go all the way down the back if you want to. So I thrifted this little cute park bench. I've had it for a while, had my little paint sitting on it. And I'm just going to press that down in there. This is at a weird angle, so, but this is what it looks like on the inside so far. She's got her little bench by her little tree. And there are little fireflies everywhere. And she has firefly friends who live in her home and they just swirl around and keep her happy. And they go all the way up to the top and it's just gorgeous. If you need to add a little hot glue to hold things apart, you can. So now I just plucked her off the top of that bottle. She can sit right here on the outside. Or I can put her right here on the inside. And if you wanted to move her around, you don't even have to glue her. I'm going to add some flowers on the inside with her very pretty i'm going to add a little more hot glue because she is going to stay on the inside however if you like to move your things around just don't glue her she'll be fine right there this is how it's going to look doesn't she look happy in there she looks so happy in there i love her wings i love the darkness and you can see the color kind of reflecting that reddish looking color or orange so pretty. So now I'm going to take the back off. Now here's an option for you, not necessary, but if you want to give her a little more decoration, there are a bunch of different types of leaves that you can thrift or get from Dollar Tree. You can pull something off of something that's broken or that you had last year. You just see some remnants that I have here. And we're going to decorate her, the back of the clock on the inside. So I just used some hot glue and this copper looking leaf because I thought this was real pretty um, based on her coloring and what we have going here for fall. 
I'm going to use a maple colored fabric or no a furniture repair marker and I'm going to color the hello fall sign or welcome fall that you get from Dollar Tree they come in multi packs and then you can just squish it back on the back now she's got a little uh, decoration on her wall maybe she's a crafty girl herself see you can see it back there depending on the angle which I love there are like little mysteries all over let's give her a wreath look there how cute that is of course with the glue string hanging off of it isn't that nice so we're going to add a little hot glue careful careful here so you don't burn yourself I'm gonna add glue on the top the bottom I'm gonna press it all the way to the wall and hold it there here I am fixing that little leaf but I want to see the backs of the leaves where all the veining is I want to see the front where it's nice and pretty and crisp and gorgeous here she is with it all lit up inside of there she's enjoying her life very much you can see my studio it's craziness going on back there so grab your mushrooms now they're all nice and dry they are coated with their Mod Podge so they have the same finish and then we're just gonna add them here and there I added some steps in you missed that part my battery kind of a uh, croaked it needed a nap so now it looks a little bit more like wood and here's the little garden outside of her house you see it butts up right next to that beautiful clock it just sits right in there you can move it into different sections here she is when it is dark and here she is when it is all lit up on the inside you could use little flickering lights in there too if you wanted you could use multicolored lights so here we are in the end screen now this is going to give you a good look of the rest of this project this I love it took me a long while to finish this project but honestly y'all these projects do take time um, I think I've told y'all that before that doesn't mean it's hard you just have to work harder I would love it if you have not subscribed that you subscribe and give me a like and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I have to share with you and because I love y'all so much I'm giving y'all a little bonus here here are our fairies look at here here's a bonus here are some crafts that I have done in the past with little fairies I am going to link a video down below if you enjoy miniatures and imaginary life and habitats and things like that I think you'll like the video that I did it's going to show you more specifically how to do each one of these projects so that you can decide which one is for you so this one is sort of a summer beachy kind of thing she's kind of living her best life there or he you know it could be it could be a male we, we just can't be sure could be either one and there are beautiful little bunnies living very happily in that log so cute yep I said cute y'all take a shot look at all these things oh my gosh I encourage y'all to never stop trying if it takes a while walk away from it go back work on it some more don't ever leave yourself hanging right if you got a good idea roll with it it's so important to trust yourself and believe in what you can do and believe that what's going to bring you joy is perfect for you I want you to always find pride in your work be happy about it for those of you who send me on Instagram pictures that of your projects that you make and you're so proud of them and I want to say thank you if you have sent me anything on Instagram or in the email I really enjoy looking at those pieces um, y'all just blow my mind with how creative you are and how willing you are to learn and I just really really love that so she needs a name y'all I want you to comment down below what is her name let's give this beautiful girl a name check out the rectangle down here for more bye